Hello. How are you? Hello, good evening. Okay, we're Richard. about to hello, hello Maximo, hello, hello Rosemary, hello Jose. We're about to start the class right now. Just let me open right now the presentation. Have you worked in the platform already? Did you work in the platform? Yes? Yes, no? teacher. Yes. yes. Perfect. Uh, did you finish the section one or just some exercises? Did you finish section one? No, no, no. Okay, no problem. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, no problem. We are going to continue right now with the topic about passive voice, right? And I didn't know if you have any question, any doubt, any uh, like any comment about yesterday's class. Preguntas acerca de la clase de ayer? No teacher. No questions. Okay. So uh, yesterday we were talking about landmarks, right? What is a landmark? What is a landmark? Who knows that? Yes, Lupita Sanchez, go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm R Rina Sanchez, uh, but yes, my oh, name okay. is Rita Guadalupe, so. Uh, okay. Well, uh, landmark is a site or a place important from a country. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about El Salvador, for example, uh, Iglesia El Rosario, mm -hmm. Catedral Metropolitana, mm -hmm. uh, and other place, places that means something for the country. Mm -hmm something about culture or uh, art, something like that. Yes, exactly. That is a landmark, right? An important place in a country, right? A place that is visited by different um, uh, tourists, right? Let's say, for example, we used to, we talked about a great wall of China, the Coliseum, the Statue of Liberty in New York, the Eiffel Tower, and also we uh, talked about the passive voice, right? What is the passive voice? What is that? What is the passive voice? Who knows? Nobody? When, when, uh -huh. when we don't know the doer. When we don't know the doer the of action. the action. Exactly. When we don't know the doer of the action. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to, yesterday we studied like these um, formulas, right? Formulas are really important because that's the way that we can write different sentences. In active voice, we use subject, verb, and object, right? My sister wrote this book. And in passive voice, we use object plus was or were, depending on the on what we are talking what, what we're talking about, plus the past participle, plus by plus mm, the object, right? Or the subject, my sister, the doer, right? So we have active voice and passive voice. If we follow this structure, we are able to uh, write different sentences in passive voice. Now, today we are going to study when are we going to use the passive voice. So these were some examples here. And we did some exercises, right? For example, mom prepared the food. The food was prepared by mom, right? Active, passive, right? 
So this is the active voice, right? Active. And the passive is this one, right? So we have, a mamá preparó la comida. La comida fue preparada por mamá. That is the passive. This is all the employees read the memo. Read is the pass of read, right? Se escribe igual, pero se pronuncia diferente. So that is active and passive, right? The memo was read by all the employees. Passive. The boy ate the cake. So that is active, right? The cake was eaten by the boy. Passive, right? And I ask you to create some sentences, right? In passive voice and in active. Did you write the sentences? Yes? No? Because if you do it, we can uh, check it right now. If it is correct, if it is not correct, we can check it right now. One volunteer. Let's see, we have Jose, Jeffrey, Rosemary, Maximo, Rina or Lupita, right? We have Nacy and Gabriela. Who wants to participate? Lupita. Okay, Rosemary, give me the mm -hmm. sentence inactive first, inactive voice. In active voice. The fire destroyed the house. Sorry, can you repeat it? The fire. The tire? Fire. The tire, like this? The fuego. Ah, the fire, the sorry. Fire. The mm -hmm. fire. The fire destroyed the street, the house. Destroyed the, the house. house. Okay, perfect. Thank um, you. And passive? And passive boy. The house was destroyed. The, the five. Very good. Perfect. Perfect, Rosemary. The okay. fire destroyed the house. So the doer of this action, let's say that is the fire, right? Destroyed. Perfect. And the passive voice. Teacher, I have a problem with my camera and microphone. Okay, Jose, no problem. And the house was destroyed, right? Was destroyed. We use the verb to be and the past participle. That is, this is the passive, right? Active and passive. And this is the passive. Next one, another volunteer. Please. Me, teacher. Okay, Gabriela, give me the sentence in active, please. My sister read the book. My sister read, read the, the book. book. This is in uh, this is this sentence is in present or in past. Está en presente o en pasado? In present. In present. Okay, what is missing then? Reads, right? Le. Reads, le, the S, right. Exactly. Now, the passive voice. The book was read by my sister. Very good. Perfect. My sister reads the book uh, and here is missing the book right sorry yes, book. the yes. book was read by my sister so let's see here this sentence that was uh, from Rosemary this one is in, in, in past este está en pasado so the passive voice is in past ¿por qué está en pasado teacher? ¿por qué dice que está en pasado? 
porque el verbo to be está en pasado. What is the past of the verb to be is? Was, right? Perfect. And this is a past participle. We are going to check the past participles. No problem. Now, you said, uh, Gabriela, right, that this one was in present, right? My sister reads the book. Mi hermana lee el libro. Perfect. Now, the book was read by my sister. Y esta está en pasado o en presente? The passive, uh, uh, the passive sentence. This one. In past, right? In past, exactly, because this one is in past. The verb to be is in past. And how can I make it in present, teacher? Is, right? The book is read by my sister. ¿Cómo se traduce eso? El libro es leído. Esto siempre va a ser past participle, siempre. No importa que esté en pasado, en presente. Esto siempre va a ser past participle. Entonces, the book is read. El libro es leído by my sister. Passive. You see? We can use it in present and we can use it in past. Next one. Alguien más? Somebody else? Teacher. Mm -hmm. I have a doubt. Yes. In this case, I went to the cinema on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I went to the cinema on, on Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Yes. Can we con we can we make this sentence? Into In passive. passive, yes. Can mm -hmm. we do it? How can how can we say? How can we say? How can we transform it? What would you do? How would you do it? On Saturday. Uh -huh. On Saturday. On Saturday. I. I was gone. I was gone. The cinema. The cinema. Is correct? Let's see. Uh, it says, I went to the cinema on Saturday. Perfect. Fui al cine o al cinema el sábado. El sábado yo fui ido al cinema, right? Is that correct? Can we do that? No, you right? Fui. No. No, exactly. Because I've gone. I've gone? No. I've let's gone. See. Remember uh the, the do you remember yesterday's video? She mentioned something really important. I went. No. Ella mencionó algo muy importante en el video de ayer. Who remembers? ¿Quién se acuerda? I will play it again. Let's see, let me find it. So los voy a poner otra vez para ver si para ver si lo podemos ver, porque ella mencionó algo muy importante ayer acerca de lo que usted está diciendo. Something about related to, to what, you, what you're trying to do right now. And I will play it again for you to see it. She speaks really fast, but actually she provides a lot of information, which is very useful. So let me see here. Okay, now I'm going to enter in the platform. Just allow me one moment. But she mentioned something really useful yesterday. Now, this is the passive. These are the examples, right? So we are here. I went to the cinema on Saturday. On Saturday, I was gone. I have gone. Okay, let me see if I'm able to access because it's not letting me go in, in, into it, okay? Intermedio tres, okay. We are going to watch the video and I will check the place where she says this information about the passive, okay? Let's watch it again. Let me know if you don't, if you're not able to listen to it, let me know. Employees read the memo. Number three, the boy sentence. 
passive voice changes the emphasis on a sentence. In other words, we may say the same thing in a different way. You may be wondering when to use it. Passive voice is the best way to express an idea when, number one, we don't know who did the action, number two, there's no doer of an action, and number three, the fact is more important than the doer of an action. As always, I will ask you to stay around and stay for the explanation. We will compare active with passive, so you see the difference and notice the emphasis on each one. We will give you examples of each use as well as the structure of passive voice. Passive with by, simple past. The passive changes the focus of a sentence. For the simple past, use the past of be plus past participle. Active. The president opened the building in 1931. Passive. It was opened by the president in 1931. Active. An American architect designed the building. Passive. It was designed by an American architect. I have this scrabble sentence for you. My sister, this book, in 2000... Way. Let's work with another scramble sentence and let's do the same and scramble it and make sense of it. This time I will give you 20 seconds. Were you able to do it? I hope you did. This book was written by my sister in 2010. Now let's take a look at each sentence. In this first sentence, which by the way is in active voice, the emphasis is on my sister. It was not Susanna who wrote the book, it was my sister. This book was written by my sister. This book is the object was, was or were, written is the past participle of the verb, by, by, my sister is the subject. In this second sentence, we're using passive voice and the emphasis is on this book. The most important fact is that the book was written. Now let's write examples for the uses previously mentioned in our intro video. Remember, we don't know who did the action. My house was broken into on Friday. Who broke into our house? We don't know. Number two, there is no doer of the action. He was killed in an earthquake. There is no doer of this action. The last use, the fact is more important than the doer of the action. My dog was run over by a car. What happened to my dog is more important than the doer. Finally, let's go over the structure of the passive and simple past. Because we're using passive in simple past, this is what we'll use. Was, were, plus past participle. Before we go, the book was written by... Now let's take a look at it. Here, what can you see here? The structure is really important and this is related to grammar, right? My sister, subject, wrote, verb, this book. Right, object, object. Now we are here with maximal sentence, right? I went to the cinema on Saturday. What is the subject? ¿Cuál es el sujeto de esta oración? I went to the cinema on Saturday. What is the subject? I. 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 Per perfect. Let's see. Let's see, verb. What is the verb? Went. Went. Very good. Where is the object? The, the object. Cinema. The cinema. Is this the cinema or on Saturday? What is the object? Let's I think find it's Saturday. It. Saturday. Okay. Let's say it's Saturday. En las otras anteriores sí pude hacer la voz pasiva. ¿Por qué? Vamos a ver. The fire is the 
subject, right? Destroy. What is destroyed? The verb. The verb. And the house? The what subject. is the house? Is the subject or the object? The object. The object. Exactly. The object. That is the object. Exactly. In this sentence, the house is the object. El objeto. El objeto que recibe la acción. Es por eso le decimos objeto. Recibe la acción. Now, next one. My sister. What is my sister? The subject. The subject. The subject. Sujeto. Reads. What is reads? The verb. The verb. And the book, what is the book? Object. Object. The object. object, exactly. It's the object, right? El que leyeron. El libro, ¿verdad? ¿Qué, qué, qué fue destruido? ¿Qué fue destruido? Uh -huh. La casa. ¿Qué fue leído? El libro. Y aquí, ¿qué fue ido? El cinema o el sábado. You see, we don't have an object. No hay objeto. We don't have it. This, what is this? This is a place. This is an adverb. An adverb de que? De lugar. Está diciendo el lugar. ¿A dónde fui? Al cinema. Entonces ahí me responde, ¿a dónde fui? ¿A dónde fui? Al cinema. Ah, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Pero este es el objeto. Este es el objeto que recibe la acción de ir. No. Este es el objeto que nos dice dónde fui. Y on Saturday, ¿qué es? Es otro adverbio. Nos está diciendo el tiempo. ¿Cuándo fui? A ah, esa es la pregunta que nos responde. ¿Cuándo fui? El sábado. ¿Dónde fui? Al cinema. ¿Cuándo fui? El sábado. Saturday. ¿Pero qué fue ido? No, right. So, in English we have things that we have. It, like in Spanish, transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. Tenemos verbos transitivos y verbos intransitivos. Y uh, los verbos transitivos siempre tienen objeto y los intransitivos no tienen. Ir es intransitivo, intransitive. Read is transitive. Destroy is transitive. You see? So grammar is important here because Maximo was trying to, probably in his house, he was trying, oh my God, how can I do this? How can I do this, right? But probably it's, it's not possible, no es posible, because no hay objeto. Para que se vuelva el sujeto de la oración pasiva. So in this case, it's not possible to create the passive voice. No se puede crear la voz pasiva porque no hay objeto. ¿Qué fue ido? Yo fui, yo fui. Entonces ya estoy diciendo que yo fui. No hay sure. nadie que haya ido, <laughs> no que haya sido ido, ¿verdad? If, if, if I change the order, I went, no. I went uh -huh. on Saturday to the cinema. But if I ask you, uh, what, what was when? ¿Qué fue ido? Si yo hago esa, esa pregunta para encontrar el objeto de la oración, what was when? ¿Qué fue ido? What is the answer? ¿Qué fue ido? Hasta la pregunta, ¿verdad? ¿Qué fue ido? No, y como que no da. ¿Cuándo fue? ¿Cuándo fue, Máximo? On Saturday, the same, right? The same answers. ¿Cuándo fue? Ah, pero ¿cuándo es? Tiempo, no es un objeto, es adverbio. ¿Dónde fue? Adverbio de lugar, ¿verdad? ¿Dónde fue? Al cine, de cinema. ¿Pero qué fue ido? Yo fui. Ah, entonces no se puede. No, no hay objeto. There is no object. But if I ask you in the, in the previous one, si yo le pregunto en esta, my sister reads the book, what was read? ¿Qué fue leído? The book. You see? The book. Ahí sí me responde esa pregunta. ¿Qué fue leído? ¿El libro? ¿Dónde fue leído el libro? No sé. ¿Cuándo fue leído el libro? Tampoco sé. Si quiero, lo puedo poner, ¿verdad? The, my sister reads the book in, his, in her bedroom, right? In her, en el cuarto de ella. ¿Cuándo? Every night. Every night. Ahí me está diciendo dónde. Ahí me está diciendo cuándo. Cuando Cada noche lo lee ella. 
¿Y dónde? En el cuarto de ella, ¿verdad? Ahí sí me responde, ¿pero qué fue leído? Ah, sí, aquí está, ¿ve? ¿Qué fue leído? The book. The book, you see? The book was read. So that is the object. Tenemos que encontrar el objeto. Como les decía, en inglés hay verbos intransitivos y los verbos intransitivos no tienen objeto, no va a haber. Y no podemos hacer la oración sin un objeto que reciba la acción. Entonces, en la voz pasiva tenemos que tener un objeto. Aquí el objeto es la casa. Ahí le podemos agregar cuándo fue quemada, dónde fue quemada, cómo fue quemada, ¿verdad? Fue quemada hasta hacerse cenizas, ashes, ¿verdad? Was destroyed until it was done ashes. Pero, eh, ¿qué fue destruido? La casa, ahí sí. So, in this case, I went to the cinema on Saturday. It's not possible, right? No hay objeto. Tienen que darme un objeto. Uh, por ejemplo, o un objeto similar, por ejemplo, sería I watch a movie in the cinema. Yo vi una película en el cine, or at the movie theater, right? ¿Dónde la vi? En el movie theater. ¿El qué? ¿Qué fue visto? ¿Qué? What was watched? A movie or the cinema? A movie. Very good, a movie. Is that the object? Yes. Mm -hmm. Porque me responde esa pregunta. ¿Qué fue visto? What was watched? A movie. So this is the object. ¿Puedo hacer esta oración en, en voz pasiva? Yes, right, because I have the I have the object. La puedo hacer en voz pasiva. What would be what would be the, the sentence? ¿Cómo sería la oración? A movie was watched in the cinema. Very good, perfect. A movie was watched, watched. in the cinema. Y ahí le puedo poner yo si quiero el día, la hora, con quién. Pero I don't want it, right? No quiero, entonces solo la dejo hasta ahí. So you see? The, the object. Ajá. Uh, yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know if you can say a movie was watched in the cinema by me. By me, yes, exactly. Si yo quiero poner el duer, ¿quién la vio? Yo. ¿Y cómo lo puedo poner? By me. By me. Fue vista por mí. Very good, perfect. You see, aquí está el sujeto. Aquí no menciono el sujeto porque como decía en el video, decía ella, the doer is not important. El que hizo la acción no es importante. O a veces no sabemos quién hizo la acción. So it is not important. But if I want to place it, si yo sí lo quiero poner, tengo que poner by me, ¿verdad? By me, by Rosemary, by Lupita, by Maximo, by Gabriela. I can't add any of them. You see? So we have to be careful. We need to find the object. So the object will become the subject of our sentence in passive voice. Teacher, Another, yes, go ahead. The, the cinema on Saturday is only a complement. A complement, exactly, a complement. It's not an object because they don't receive the action of the verb. Okay. Exactly. Very good, Maximo. It's a compliment. They are adverbs. Another sentence. ¿Quién hizo otra oración? You see, we are learning right now. Another sentence. Or no more sentence. Who else did the homework? ¿Quién más hizo la tarea? Nobody else? Okay, perfect. No problem. So, si nadie más hizo la tarea, try to practice, okay? Try to practice. You see here, we have the structure, and this is the structure for um, the passive, right? You see, object was where past participle verb plus by plus the subject. You see, this book was written by my sister. It said, the meat was eaten by my cat. Exactly. The meat was eaten by my cat. Ahí están poniendo, um, la carne fue comida por mi gato, right? Ahí 
la carne, ¿verdad? Es, ella recibe la acción. The engineering, or in, in this case, the engineer, el ingeniero, right? The engineer built the stadium. Exactly. ¿Qué fue construido? Háganse esa pregunta. ¿Qué fue construido? El estadio. ¿Qué fue comido? La carne. The car was fixed by the mechanic. Exacto. The car was fixed by the mechanic. ¿Qué fue, qué fue arreglado? ¿Qué? El carro. Ah, that is the object. Ese fue el, ese es el objeto. The mechanic fixed the car. Exactly. That is the active. Exactly, Melissa. Very good. Very good. You see, that's how we build the passive voice. Now we are going to continue with the passive voice because um, I just want, just, we are going to finish. Ahora vamos a terminar con la passive voice, ¿verdad? Solo vamos a revisar. These are the examples that we have in um, the video, right? Examples. When are we going to use the passive voice? ¿Cuándo lo vamos a utilizar? When we don't know who did the action, when there is no doer of the action, or the fact is more important than the doer of the action. Machu Picchu, for example, Machu Picchu in Peru was constructed around 1400 AD. Tenemos aquí, eh, ¿quién hizo, quién hizo el, el Machu Picchu? No, ¿verdad? It's not important. It was probably a home for the Inca royal family. Machu Picchu was declared UNESCO World Heritage Site in 18, 1983. 1983, right? Machu Picchu fue declarado, was declared UNESCO World Heritage Site, el sitio de, de la herencia mundial de la UNESCO, ¿verdad? So, um, who declared it? ¿Quién la declaró? Sabemos que fue eh, la UNESCO, pero ¿quién exactamente? We don't know, right? And probably it's not important. Probablemente no es importante. So you see, that's when we use uh, the passive voice. We are going to check uh, right now, when are we going to use it? O normalmente, ¿cuándo vemos la passive voice en, en la vida diaria? Porque nosotros no hablamos así, ¿verdad? In Spanish, we don't say, we, we use the passive voice, pero no, no decimos, el café fue tomado por mí. Y luego... Eh, la televisión fue vista por mí y el libro fue leído por mí y el sueño fue soñado por mí. No hablamos así. Entonces, ¿cuándo lo utilizamos? When do we use the passive voice? That's what we are going to study today. This is another example of the passive voice. The passive changes the focus of a sentence. The object of the, pa of the active sentence becomes the subject of the passive sentence. The stadium was built by the engineer. Exactly, Jose Moises. The stadium was built by the engineer. You see, President Herbert Hoover opened the building in 1931. Active, passive, the building. ¿Qué fue abierto? El edificio. The building was opened by the president in 1931. And here are more examples, right? Mr. Johnson prepared the food. The food was prepared by Mr. Johnson. Santiago wrote a book. The book was written by Santiago. You see, more examples, and we use it in the same way. La usamos, si ya tenemos la fórmula, lo podemos usar de esa misma manera. Let's see here. Oh, this is the formula. Remember, write the formula. This is the formula. Recuerden encontrar el objeto. Si la oración en voz activa tiene objeto, la pueden transformar. Si no tiene objeto, no la pueden transformar en voz pasiva. For the simple past, use the past of B. Plus past participles. Siempre ahorita vamos a ver los past participles. And this is the structure to create a sentence in passive. Object plus was, were, plus past participle of the verb. Plus by, if we want to mention the doer, right? And time complement. Aquí es lo que decía Máximo. Ellos son un complemento, ¿verdad? Teacher me dijo, sí. Lo, el tiempo, los lugares son complementos. ¿Qué podemos agregar a la oración? Now, these are 100 examples of present past participles. Estos son ejemplos de past participles, right? 
And these are uh, irregular verbs. Estos son verbos irregulares, right? Abide, abode, and abode. Arise, arose, and arisen, right? Entonces, de estas tres columnas, ¿cuál es el past participle? Which one is the past participle? This one, this one, or this one? The number one, number two, or number three? Number, number three. three. Number three, exactly. And number one, what is that? What is the verb is in, in is in present, is in past? Present. Present. Present, present. Exactly. And number two? Past. 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 Okay. So if you look in the dictionary, if you look for them, uh, thank you, Jose Moises. Uh if you uh, look for them in, in the dictionary, the first one will be the present, the second one will be the past, and the third one will be the past participle. Which one are we going to use for passive voice? The first one, the second one, or the third one? The third one. The third one. You see, all of these, all of the past participles are used in passive voice. Todos los pasados participios que pueden usar en la voz pasiva. But teacher, there are many, son muchos teachers. Nunca me lo voy a aprender. Nunca. Usted vaya poco a poco. Un día apréndase uno. El siguiente día aprendase dos y así y va a ver que al final ya al final de la semana va, va a tener siete, al final del mes va a tener treinta y así. Tiene que ir incluyendo el inglés a su vida si quiere aprenderlo. Um, y aquí tenemos el, el the, the orange table, el cuadro naranja. Hay más, ¿verdad? These are some examples. No vamos a, a hacer examen de esto ni nada. Son ejemplos para que ustedes lo busquen o también pueden buscar los más fáciles, ¿verdad? The easier ones are the, the one in, in regular, the, the, the regular verbs, but they are difficult in the pronunciation. So we have here draw. What is the meaning of draw? ¿Qué significa draw? Dibujar. Dibujar. And Drew? Dibujar. Dibujar. Dibujé, exactly. Dibujé. Yo dibujé. <laughs> Ella dibujó, exactly. And drawn? What is drawn? Dibujado. 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 Por eso en pasivo decimos fue dibujado. dibujado. You see? Was drawn. You see? Wow. Fue dibujado, fue soñado, fue bebido, etc. Right? Depending. So all of these are used, all of the past participles. Esos son los past participles. Uh, all of them are going to be used in the passive voice, you see? So it's part, part by part. You need to uh, join all the knowledge that you have studied before to use these structures. Tienen que utilizar todo lo que han estudiado antes para usar estas eh, estructuras. Okay, let's continue. Now we are going to, these are some examples about landmarks, okay? Because tomorrow, we are going to practice. Vamos a practicar la voz pasiva. Tomorrow, I want you to investigate about a landmark. Your favorite landmark can be from El Salvador, can be from France, can be from Peru, can be from China. And I want you to present your favorite landmark using the passive voice. Van a usar la voz pasiva para presentar una landmark. For example, the Eiffel Tower that we already studied, right? When it was open in 1989, al menos una o dos oraciones tienen que usar. When it was open in 1889, the tower was red. After a decade, it was painted yellow. And later, it was covered in different shades of brown. So, tienen que presentarme ustedes una landmark para mañana. Esa va a ser la tarea para mañana. Algo así. Pueden elegir cualquiera que ustedes quieran. You can choose any any landmark, okay? Mount Fuji, the Statue of Liberty, the Big Ben, right, that is in England. The tower is named uh, Elizabeth Tower. So the, uh, the tower is Elizabeth Tower. The Big Ben is the name of the bell inside of it, right? So it's, no es la, la torre, sino que la campana se llama Big Ben. You see, so investigate that. I, I no quiero a big presentation, like a long presentation, no. Short presentation, short, but you need to use the passive voice. 
So we are going to review the simple, uh, the passive with by, right? El, el, la voz pasiva con by. Simple pass. And me van a ayudar a leer. You are going to help me read here. It says the passive voice is used to show interest in the person or object that receives an action rather than the person or object that performs the action. If we want to say who or what performs the action, we use the preposition by. And let's see, Gabriela, can you speak right now? Uh, can you turn on your microphone? Yes. Okay, read uh, the three sentences, please. Okay, that video was watched by many people. The song Hello was written by Adele. American was discovered by Christopher Columbus. Sorry. Escucha. Yes, sorry, Jeffrey. Thank you. So uh, in these sentences, they are already in passive, right? So what is uh, the object? ¿Quién está recibiendo la acción en esas tres oraciones? Who is receiving the action? For example, in the first one, that video was watched by many people. What is the object? That video. The video, exactly. Uh, the song Hello was written by Adele. What is the object? The song, the hello. Song. The song, hello, exactly. America was discovered by Christopher Columbus. What is the object? America. ¿Quién recibe la acción? ¿Qué fue descubierto? America. America, you see? I ask your question, ask yourself. Pregúntese usted mismo, what was discovered? America, so that is the object, you see? Because they are in passive already, ya están en pasivo. Si están en activo, por ejemplo, la última, if it was in inactive, Christopher Columbus discovered America, right? Discovered America, that would be inactive, perfect. Now, this is, well, I'm going to send you this, right? Esto lo, lo voy a enviar para que ustedes lo tengan. This is the passive with by, this is the simple past, this is active voice. And it says subject, the, the words in black are the subjects, right? Verb, the words in blue are the verbs. And object, the verb, the, uh, the words in purple are the object. All of them, como pueden ver, todas tienen objeto. My mother wrote that letter. Italians invented the pizza. William Lamb designed the Empire State Building. Rina ate two hamburgers you see so um all of these are inactive todas estas están inactivas y todas tienen objeto now passive what is uh the structure we need to follow this structure right aquí está la formula object plus b plus past participle plus by plus subject jeffrey can you read the sentences please that letter was written by my mother the pizza was invaded by Italians. The Empire State Building was designed by William Lamb. Two hamburgers were eaten by Rina. Very good, perfect. Uh, Jeffrey, in the um, first sentence that you read, the, the, that letter was written by my mother. Who is the doer of the action? My mother. My mother, exactly. She is the doer. Of the action she was the subject in active voice right so the subject it, it exists siempre existe el, el sujeto pero now it's not important in passive voice let's see rosemary the pizza was invented by italians what is the object cuál es el objeto the pizza, the pizza. very good number four the empire store building was designed by william lamb Patricia, who is, oops, uh, who is the doer of the action? What design? ¿Quién hizo la acción? The doer. Doer es el que hizo ah. la acción. By William. By William, exactly. William Lamb is the doer. And Melissa Flores. 
The last one. Two hamburgers were eaten by Rina. What is the object of that sentence? ¿Cuál es el objeto? Two hamburgers. Two hamburgers, exactly. Because if we ask ourselves what was eaten or what were eaten, two hamburgers, right? Two hamburgers were eaten, las hamburguesas. Very good. Questions about this? Preguntas? Questions? No question. Everything's clear. Okay, very good. Perfect. So tomorrow, I hope you have you will present a lot of sentences in passive and in active, right? When you present the landmarks, okay? Remember, that is tomorrow's homework, right? Present a landmark using the passive. And now we have a conversation because also uh, I've spoke a, a lot. I spoke a lot today. Ya hablé bastante. Now it's your turn, right? To practice this conversation. Let's see what time it is. Uh, 8.41. Perfect. I think that this will be the last one. We are going to listen to this conversation. La vamos a escuchar. And then we are going to read it. La vamos a leer. And then if you have any question about any um any word new word any sentence uh, we are going to to investigate it okay now let's see let me see if i can find it is it here like it's here okay let me know if you are able to listen to it also. Here we have a conversation between Lisa and Eric. They were talking about the Netherlands. Let's listen to their conversation. Page 75, exercise eight, conversation. What do you want to know? Part A, listen and practice. Eric, you're from Amsterdam, aren't you? Yeah, why? I'm going there for a conference, and I'd like some information. Sure, what do you want to know? Do you use the euro in the Netherlands? Yes, the euro is used in most of Europe, you know. And do I need to take euros with me? Not really. International credit cards are accepted everywhere, and they're much safer. Of course. And what should I buy there? Cheese, definitely. We raise dairy cows, and some really excellent cheese is made from their milk. Good. I love cheese. Where is it sold? You can find it at cheese shops all around the city. And don't forget to bring me a piece. Okay, perfect. What was the conversation about? What was the conversation about? About because Amsterdam? It, about Amsterdam. Um, Who is going to go to Amsterdam? Lisa. Lisa, exactly. And where is Amsterdam? Where is Amsterdam? In Europe. In Europe, in Europe exactly. In Europe is in the Netherlands, right? In the Netherlands. And what is the question she's uh, making to Eric? What is she asking for? The currency that we that he used. The currency, exactly. Currency, like euro, right? Euro. That is the pronunciation. Euro. It's like Europe, but without the up, right? Euro. Euro. And does she need to take euros with her? Yes or no? Does she need euros? No, just credit cards. Just credit cards. You can take your credit card. You don't need euros, right? It's much safer. Yeah. And what uh, she should buy there? ¿Qué debe de comprar ella ahí? What is the recommendation from Eric? Cheese. Cheese, exactly, cheese. We raise dairy cows. Dairy. What is dairy cows? What is dairy? What is that? Dairy cows. What is that? 
derivados de vaca. Mm -hmm. We raise dairy cows, right? Como eh, ellos raise cows, it means that they, ellos eh, yeah. crían, Con... exactly, crían ganado, right? Con vacas para que les den leche. Dairy, some, los lácteos, right? And some really excellent cheese is made from their milk, milk right? Very good. And where is it sold? Uh, where is it sold? That question is in active or in passive? Where is it sold? That is active or passive? Where is it sold? It's passive, exactly. You see, we can use the passive voice also with questions. Where is it sold? Donde es vendido? You see, where is it sold? Very good. Do you have any other question about the conversation? Questions? No questions? Okay, we are going to listen to it again. Why? Because we are going to practice it. Traten de imitar como ellos hablan, okay? Let's listen to it again. Here we have a conversation between Lisa and Eric. They were talking about the Netherlands. Let's listen to their conversation. Page 75. Exercise 8. Conversation. What do you want to know? Part A. Listen and practice. Eric, you're from Amsterdam, aren't you? Yeah, why? I'm going there for a conference, and I'd like some information. Sure, what do you want to know? Do you use the euro in the Netherlands? Yes. The euro is used in most of Europe, you know. And do I need to take euros with me? Not really. International credit cards are accepted everywhere, and they're much safer. Of course. And what should I buy there? Cheese, definitely. We raise dairy cows, and some really excellent cheese is made from their milk. Good. I love cheese. Where is it sold? You can find it at cheese shops all around the city. And don't forget to bring me a piece. Perdón, el audio de nuevo. Sorry, I guess, I guess I, I, I pushed the button on mute here in my headset. So we're going to practice the conversation. That's what I was saying. Sorry. Uh, we are going to practice the conversation, and if we have time, at the end, we are going to check vocabulary, okay? Um, let's see, I need two volunteers. Two volunteers. Only two. Me, teacher. Lupita Sanchez, your arena, right? Okay, go ahead, and who is going to help her? Can I ayudar? you that? Can I? Okay, let's see. Just Smith. Okay, so Just Smith, uh, you will be Eric, and uh, Lupita Sanchez will be Lisa. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Eric, you're from Amsterdam, aren't you? Yeah. Why? I'm going there for a conference, and I'd like some information. Sure. What do you uh, What do you do? Want to know? Do you Do you use the euro in the Netherlands? Yes. The euro is used is in most of the uh, Europe. You know. And do I need to take euros with me? Not really. International credit cards are accepted everywhere and they're much safer. Of course. And what should I and what should I buy there? Cheese. Definitely. We raise dairy cows and some really excellent cheese is made from the milk. Good. I love cheese. Where is it sold? You can find it cheese shops 
all around the city. And don't forget to bring me a piece. Okay, very good, perfect. Thank you, Yasemite, and thank you, Lupita. Now, let's see what time it is. Choose someone else. Choose someone else, Lupita. Yeah. Someone else from my classmates. Yes, from your classmates. Choose two classmates. Uh, I will choose... Nacy. Nacy, okay. And? Nacy, are you able to use your microphone? Nacy, can you speak? Can you speak aloud? Can you see me now? No, it's kind of, you, you listen, you, I hear you, but like far away. Oh, Nancy, uh, she has problems with the microphone. Okay, so, uh, Patricia? Patricia? Patricia Rodriguez, are you there? My teacher. Okay, she's there. And somebody else, alguien más? Sonia Araceli? Sonia Araceli, are you there, Sonia? Yes. Okay, so Patricia will be Lisa and Sonia will be Eric. Go ahead, please. Okay. Eddie, you're from Amsterdam, are you? Yeah, why? I'm going there for conference. I like some information. Sure, what do you want to do? Pardon. Do what you do you do? want to know? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Do you use the euro in the Amsterdam? Yes, the euro is used in most of Europe, you know. And I and do uh do I need to take euros with me? Not really. International credit card cards are accepted everywhere and they must suffer. Of course. And what should a buy there? She's definitely. We were rice daily crows and some really excellent cheese is made from the from their milk. Good, I love cheese. Where is where is it sold? You can find it at cheese shop all around the city and don't forget to bring me a piece. Very good, perfect. And now the last the last uh pair. The last one. Well, let me see if we still have time here. Yes, the last ones. Um, Patricia, choose two people. Fast, please. Gabriela. Mm -hmm. uh, Jose Moises. I guess Jose Moises has problems with the microphone. Ah, Another Rosemary. Okay, Gabriela, you will be Lisa. And Rosemary will be Eric. Go ahead, please. Eric, you are from Amsterdam, aren't you? Yeah, why? I'm going there for a conference and I like some information. Sure. What did you want to know? Do you use the euro in the Netherlands? Yeah, the euro is used a lot of Europe, you know? And do I need to take euros with me? No, really. International credit cards are accepted everywhere, and they're much safer. Of course. And what should I buy there? Cheese, definitely. We raise their house. Um, some really excellent cheese is made from their milk. Good. I love cheese. Where is it sold? You can find it at cheese shop all around the city. And don't forget to write me a piece. Very good. Perfect. Perfect. Let's see here. Uh some um some words that we can 
uh, practice for all of you. Uh, let's see, Amsterdam, right? Amsterdam, and it's different than the Netherlands, right? Netherlands. So uh, let's see, Euro is difficult. Euro is like Europe, but without the P-E, right? Euro. Uh, much safer, right? Much. We see a U there, but it's much. Accepted. Accepted? Mm, yeah, but it's better if we say accepted. And let's see here. No, I think that uh, most of it was really good. Very good participation, very good pronunciation of the words. Mm -hmm. Remember that tomorrow you will have presentations, a, pre a short presentation, right? Una presentación corta de landmarks. And try to use the passive voice. Please repeat euro and Europe. Euro is the currency, right? Euro. And Europe is the continent, right? Okay, Europe. Europe, exactly. So try to practice yourself. Try to watch yourself in the mirrors and the mirror and pre prepare for tomorrow, right? To practice English. Do you have any question, any doubt right now? Preguntas? No, no questions? No, 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 no. Okay. So tomorrow we are going to practice and we are going to review the vocabulary. Uh, have a nice evening and please rest, okay? I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, good night. Bye, see you tomorrow. Have a nice night, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.